morning. It is March 16th, and we are in Philippians chapter 4 this morning. Only two verses, uh, but they're uh, getting down to the end of the chapter where Paul is writing his conclusion. And there's in this one, and then the one again on Thursday, uh, there'll be two very familiar verses that you know probably by heart or at least in context. And so I want to read uh, verse 8 and verse 9 today. Uh, you know, God created our brain, or uh, let's say the mind, uh, in a very unique way and more complicated and complex than any computer that's ever been created. Uh, the human mind is, again, in the image of God we have been created. And so uh, understanding the significance of what we think on how we actually allow ourselves to think, and the direction that we choose to go with our thinking uh, can make all the difference. And that's where Paul is addressing this, because the church at Philippi, uh, even though you know he's the one writing from prison, we understand the, the significance of what we go through in life. And this last year, uh, with COVID and isolation and complexities of politics and just the list goes on and then add to that the individual struggles that you have faced and the personal things your family has gone through. Uh, there's a great need for us to think on things that are uh, godly. And so let me read to you these two verses this morning. Philippians chapter 4 beginning in verse 8. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do and the God of peace will be with you. So Paul lists uh, true, noble, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. Uh, the first thing we take away from this today is we need to channel our thinking, direct our thinking towards the things that are pure, lovely, noble, just, uh, good things. And it's so easy. Our mind has created uh, pathways or ruts, and we typically go to the negative first. We think the worst. We uh, find ourselves dwelling on and kind of, you know, like a vortex, we find ourselves spiraling downward into this thinking that is contrary to what God tells us. And so what do we find that is good, true, lovely, and of uh, noble. Well, it's in the Word of God. It's the things of God. It's the people of God. And you begin to channel your thinking towards those things, and you begin to dwell on, you know, how godly that particular person is. How good God's been to me over this particular issue. Look at all the things in the past that God has rescued me from. And you begin to dwell on those kinds of thinking, and you begin to see changes take place. But it's not just what we think about, it's also how we think. Paul says in the New King James, uh, meditate on these things. I believe the King James says, think on these things. Uh, the Greek word for that is uh, logizomai. We, we would get logic from that. Uh, it's our reasoning, our thinking. It's uh, reckoning so. It's considering the thought and dwelling on it. Uh, and I think the word meditate in the New King James best describes because it's the process of over and over and over again thinking on that. I remember uh, as a young man for the first time really hearing a good description of that. Uh, we raised beef cattle uh, growing up and so we uh, were very familiar with the illustration that I heard uh, used, but uh, cattle chew their cud. Uh, and it, it's not chewing the cheek, so to speak, like it might appear, but they regurgitate uh, what they have eaten and they chew it again. And uh, it's a very dangerous process because if they get a piece of metal or something that they've consumed through the hay, 
uh, it can cause damage. You can imagine that coming up over and over again. And so uh, some farmers would even uh, instill a weighted magnet in the cow's stomach in order to attract anything for that reason. Um, but you can imagine, here's this cow chewing its cud. It brings something up, it chews it, it swallows it. It brings it up, chews on it again, and swallows it. There's the idea of what we need to be meditating on in our minds. We bring something to our mind, we chew on it, and then we swallow it, and we repeat that process. And when we do that with positive things, Paul shows us the result here. Uh, we call it worry and anxiety when we do the same thing with negative things. And so my encourage to you today is to find the good things of God. Meditate on them. Chew on them. Swallow them. Bring them up again. And uh, you could start with just maybe one verse. Maybe that verse today from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Think on that verse and dwell on it and chew on it and swallow it and bring it up in your mind again so that you can see the results that Paul talks about here in the end of Philippians 4. And then he goes one step further in verse number 9. The things which you have learned, so we're talking intellect, received, there's a training, uh, heard, listening, saw, visually, uh, the things that you have learned, received, heard, saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Uh, what a challenge. Uh, the Apostle Paul is to be able to say, if you look at my life, live just like me. And uh, that's an encouragement to us, first of all, that we should be living in such a way that other people should imitate or mimic our lives. Uh, but also the fact that you and I can learn from other godly people. Uh, if you see someone at church, uh, see what they do, see how they love their spouse, see how they encourage their children, uh, imitate that. Maybe ask them questions. Hey, what did you do when you went through something similar? Uh, but we learn from and we model the lives of other godly Christian people. And so... Uh, this Tuesday, lots to think about, lots to dwell on, lots to meditate on, and uh, it begins in the Word of God and the things of God in your life. Have a great Tuesday.